Hi, I'm Cindy Abbott Leitro for Behind the Camera. And today, uh, exciting news because a uh, second uh, major film has been made here in Buffalo by this duo, John Abrahams and uh, Matt Quinn, longtime friends. Uh, you just wrapped on Cloak. That's right. And maybe tell us a little bit about what this film is because okay. you've been, you were shooting it here, what, in the winter? We were. We shot Clover here uh, in November and December. Um, kind of leading into the roaring mouth of winter. Um, and uh, Clover is a sort of throwback crime film, um, you know, reminiscent of 80s buddy crime movies I love. Uh, and it's about uh, two bumbling brothers who own a bar and get into a situation kind of over their heads where a young girl is the witness to a murder and they have to protect the young girl protect themselves. And you're one of the bumbling brothers. I am one of the bumbling brothers. It's not a big stretch for me. <laughs> and who is the other bumbling brother? Uh, Mark Weber, very talented actor and director mm -hmm. named Mark Weber, yeah. And why was Buffalo good for this film? Buffalo was good for Clover uh, for a number of reasons, but specifically it was a bigger film than our last one all at once and it involved a lot of kind of action and, you know, gunfights and things like that. And um, you know, one of the greatest things about working in Buffalo is you can accommodate these things much more easily than you can in a city like New York, you know, city or the five boroughs. Uh, you know, uh, hey, we're going to be shooting guns out on the street in public and get some cops <laughs> and close down the street. Is that a good thing yeah. or a bad thing? I'm not sure. Well, well no, it's a, good, it's a good, good thing, thing for production, right? That's okay. what we're talking about. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, and so those kinds of things make the allure of Buffalo. Fantastic, and they, and they come through every time, you know. And we had a lot of locations, and we didn't have as big of a shoot schedule as you normally would for a movie of this size. So, um, and we were able to, you know, we got about 98% of that. So, it's pretty good. That's a good thing. Yeah. All at once, that was sort of where you first. Well, Matt, you talked him into coming here, right? And well, we had, yeah, we've been talking for years about, you know, doing a film some way, somehow, you know at some point in our lives together, but it but it, uh, it kind of came up and we kind of talked about... Do you, do you want to know the, the inception of the idea? Yes, so, yes. <laughs> so I'll, I'll start by saying All at Once is a movie about a, a young artist in New York City uh, in 2001 who accepts guardianship of his best friend's children when they pass away on 9-11. Right. And it takes place 11 years after when this man has been raising these girls as his own. It's sort of a look at a unique family situation and, you know, there's a number of things we kind of wanted to examine. Having grown up in downtown Manhattan, him partially and me my whole life, you know, we grew up five blocks from the Trade Center, so there were some things we needed to exercise from ourselves about that. And, uh, but how it came about initially was two things. He came to me and really was important to him to help build the infrastructure of um, film production in Buffalo. And uh, also, he had called me a few years prior and said, hey, I just made you guardian of my children. Yeah. Um, should anything ever happen to me and my wife? Is that okay? And I said, sure. And then a week later, my cousin called me and said, hey, just letting you know I made you guardian of uh, Milo. If something ever happens to us, is that okay? And I went, uh-huh, sure. And in my morbid brain, I thought, Wow, what would that be like if all of a sudden, for whatever reason, God forbid, I ended up with totally a bunch of kids life. that weren't my yes. own right. and I accepted guardianship and wanted to do the right thing. So that's the inception of the idea. And uh, yeah. And you shot that in what, 2015? We shot it in 2015. Right. And, and now I understand it just had its. Yes, so it is. It is. Um, it came out on all uh, TV on demand platforms April third. Right. And it will be coming out on all streaming on demand, Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, all that stuff in another couple months. And uh, we're doing a little bit of some theater openings around the country. And uh, yeah, came awesome. out really good. Does that happen more often than not? That films now are. Uh, premiering on Amazon, on streaming, yeah. not in, in theaters. You know, absolutely. As well as the certainly, absolutely, yeah. And certainly a movie of this size, of all at once his size, which is a smaller film. It's a human interest story. It's not, you know, Avengers Infinity War. Yeah. Um, you I'm know. glad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, you know, I think, I think you're right. And I think, like, you know, there's a tendency to 
for people to think, well, only the youth is interested in watching things on demand as their first experience in a film. But I don't, I don't think it is only youth. I think it is people that are, you know, other demographics that are that are looking to those platforms for for movies like this first, as opposed to theaters. Fortunately, the people that are behind um, this production, our productions, are interested in having them show in theaters too, and it really is exciting to see them, our film in theaters. Yeah, you know? I mean, we, we make movies for the big screen because that's what we grew up with. Sure, you know? sure. Younger filmmakers will be growing up with movies like this big. <laughs> It'll However they watch them, it, like, it's yeah. good news. It people, is good news for if, us, if, that's right. If stories are being told and people are watching movies. And now I understand you just uh, you are a union uh, yep. cameraman now. That's correct. So that that's a long journey, though, isn't it, to get to be... A, Absolutely. I mean, well, from film school to, uh, <laughs> you know, working as a production assistant in New York City for many years and also a waiter along uh, doing at that. Same Seems time. as that's always part of it. If you're in New York and you're in any uh, aspect of this industry, that happens. You have to have uh, a certain hour, amount of hours clocked as a waiter in order to get in the union. John, uh, But uh, really quick, I, it wasn't until I moved to Buffalo that I really got an opportunity to start getting a lot of experience working in the camera department and in making, you know, documentary films and uh, short films and feature films. This isn't the first time you two have worked together. In fact, I listened to an interview and I couldn't believe this. You were saying, oh gee, our, our, our friendship goes back 30 years. You don't look old enough to have had that long of a friendship, but you two met in New York City. We did. We met in New York City. Uh, he is born and raised in Buffalo, but moved to my neighborhood in New York City when he was nine. We were twelve, nine, and uh, and he lived there for what seven years, eight years, and we were really close then, and stayed close all these years. I mean, uh, yeah. Were you interested in this, you know, in entertainment and telling stories and all of that way I back when? I think we were always big fans of movies, and um, like anybody else, and also always interested in the arts. And growing up, all of our friends' families were always going on auditions for commercials, and and John was always acting in you know uh, high school plays and that sort of thing. So it was always a very kind of creative environment that we were around. I think definitely. We we went for a short time to the same high school, which was a a very kind of liberal arts high school. And, you know, there was film class and photography class. And, right. Well, you're doing it all now. I mean, but and it must be fun for you to reconnect. But you're directing and starring in the last, you know, the both two films, films that have both yep. been made here in Buffalo. Mm -hmm. How do you how do you direct yourself? <laughs> you know, I it, I just treat it like it's another actor, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, it's usually. A, another agreeable actor, you know, not a problematic actor. Um, <laughs> and you know what this one's saying. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. so it's not that hard to direct them. And, uh, you know, it doesn't, I don't know, because the two films I've made, that's what I've done. It's, uh, I don't know it any other way, right? So it's not that difficult. Why Buffalo? I, I mean, you've got this friendship, which I would think that mm -hmm. uh, Matt was probably lobbying you to come here yeah, and do yeah. this. But apart from that, why Buffalo? Well, uh, you know, it, it, it really is that he came to me and had been living back in Buffalo, uh, you know, as an adult and, and sort of brought up the tax incentives and brought up... Um, you know, that it would be fun to, to jump in and do something and that we could do something along the lines of what we were interested in easily in Buffalo. And that was certainly the case, you know. Well, I think also to rewind, I had done a previous film called The Romance right. here in Buffalo um, a couple of years before we did um, All at Once. And, uh, you know, we, I was, you know, shooting the film and we, it was, it was like late into the shoot. We wanted to see John would come in as a cameo, and he was like, I don't, you know, guys, you know, it's like a small, I don't know. And he was like, okay, I'm just gonna come. And one day he came in, it was a very, very small part in a, in a car, he drove up, he kind of said some lines, and he's in the movie. So, but, you know, during his time up here, he's like, he's like, I don't know if you guys are ready for, you know, big, big, big time stuff. Yeah, but he kept hearing stories moving forward about how good the crew was getting, how much experience they were getting, how we were, you know, setting up the yeah. equipment, we had stuff available, and we had he, people, so... He really had uh, all confidence in the Buffalo crew and, and the film commission and everything, and, 
you know, I know him well enough to know when he's being 100% honest. <laughs> and so I was like, I was in, you know. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, I, I think um, I think I like the fact that the the you know Buffalo film crew and production thing is growing. You know, it's nice to be part of the growth as opposed to you know expecting it to all be built in when we came you know when we came here. Um, well, not only that time. too. I mean, Buffalo has a lot of amazing locations. Oh, amazing! And, I mean, and you know, we, I, I get into that in a second. I mean, I mean. Know. When we were developing all at once, I mean, we basically tailored that film to be shot. I mean, it takes place in Buffalo. It is a Buffalo story for sure, and a lot of it takes pieces of both of our lives out of that. And the writer that we worked with, Michael Festone, really did a good job putting that all together. Not having been here before, listening to stories from John and myself, and how we all wanted to kind of make this film kind of together. Right. Um, uh, the locations were perfect, and in many situations, we would shoot a lot of scenes here that take place in New York City. No one even knows. Um, people that are, are critiquing the film. New York don't even know that. They don't know. It's not in New York City. <laughs> I, know that, I know that street where like, it's in Buffalo, actually. Not only that, a lot of people think that we just shot all of the film in New York and that we just maybe came up here for a couple of plate shots of Niagara Falls or something like that. They're really surprised to hear yeah. that it was 100% locally made but, for, you know. Yeah, and you know. to further that, like, I mean, you know, we. The, the first film all at once was uh, a smaller film than Clover and right. you know we got an amazing amount of production value out of shooting here and those are you know access to things very easily that you would never get in a city like like New York City or you know Los Angeles or whatever where you'd be fighting for locations and they would have already been shot a million times in the right uh, in the time that remains and we've got a, a couple minutes here sure. what do you think that we need to do? You know, what's the, the next step for right here? What do we need in order to get, you know, a continuing stream of bigger films? I'll let you start. I think, you know, the, the groundwork has all been getting laid, and I think that, you know, Western New York has a really good buzz about it, and you hear about it from people in the industry and just people locally, and not and from out of town, too. They read a lot of scripts that are supposed to take place in Buffalo. I think that what would really have to happen to take it to the next next level would be for either some sort of franchise film um, to sign up to start working here um, for a couple of films or some sort of television you know serial style television program I mean there's so many outlets now for stuff so you never know yeah but I think that would be like the next thing that would really and what would make we it have blow to do to get, I mean what so I, I, and I've said this all along I think what is missing right now is like a kind of major stage space and that can accommodate a television show and that can accommodate... So that you have a, a place for a set that things can be done Yeah, you know, a soundstage complex, you know. I mean, there's so much competition for stage space in New York City now. Um, and I think that the next level here is to be able to accommodate, you know, a, play, a show, a television show that needs, you know, maybe one or two sound stages or like he's saying, you know, a franchise film that needs to do most of their shooting with green screen and stuff, and they need big stages for that. And there's big stunts and a back lot and all that stuff. I mean, you know, I think that's coming though. Stuff yeah. is all about, you know, equipment and money and building that stuff up. I think that the main thing though is that we have proven here that our local film community can handle tier one and above major motion pictures handling all aspects, all departments, and we're talking from, you know, the stuff that happens in the production office to the set and in between. And I think that, you know, with some with some transplants coming in from Los Angeles and New York and other places we've been having a great relationship with Pittsburgh and some other um, cities close by where people are coming in to help support these uh, productions. And I think that was the major hurdle just was to show and prove like if you come here we can handle We it. have the people. Yeah. And you know, I mean, I, I think that people are the most important thing. And fancy video cameras and, you know, big production spaces are, are, are secondary. Well, I gotta say, um, I think that's gonna happen. Mm -hmm. I think it's just a matter of what the time frame will be. Because folks like you have brought us so far. Yeah. And uh, it, it's a very exciting time to be involved, I think, in the film. Buffalo. I think so too. And I thank both of you. Now, what's the, just before we go, when does, is Clover going to, how will it be, uh, 
you know, rolled out? Where will we see it? Well, I, you know, that's anybody's guess right now. Hopefully sometime in 2019. Mm -hmm. um, maybe, you know, early 2019 would be amazing. Um, we'll probably do some festivals and, and take it from there. Great, yeah. cool. Oh, it's, real quick, yeah. All at Once is out now, and we just had to open up yeah. last week, and we're doing great, and it's got a really amazing response, and you should check that out, too. All at Once is the first film that we did together in Buffalo, um, and uh, please go watch it. Yeah. All at Once. Clover looks great, too. At All at Once movie on Instagram, uh, and uh, yeah. yeah. Take note of that, uh, and we'll see you next time with Behind the Camera.